When it comes crashing down and it hurts inside, you gotta be a man. It don't help to hide. I hope you guys are ready to travel back 35 years. That's five years longer than Marty traveled back to in Back to the Future. <laughs> so we are going way back to when I was 11 years old, going on 12, 1989, WrestleMania 5, the mega powers explode all over your faces. This, like somebody just pointed out here in the chat, OTS Tribal Queen is a 14 match card. Count them, 14 match card. Peacock runtime is three hours, 38 minutes, 44 seconds. I don't want to hear any bitching about how many matches are on AEW card. Good grief. 14's a lot, but I love this WrestleMania. I haven't watched it in a long time, and we I meant to get to this one like two or three weeks ago, and so it's finally here. Mega Powers Explode, Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, main event. Very, very good main event, actually. One of my favorite WrestleMania main events, even though five isn't widely regarded as one of the best WrestleManias. Main event's solid. It really is. Hogan and, and Savage had a classic, and I loved it. And of course, we can't forget about the WrestleMania rap Run DMC. I'm going to be curious, as George Morris mentioned up there, which I'll get to in a second, this show might be heavily dubbed and edited on Peacock, and we all know how much Greg loves that. So hopefully you guys are having a great Sunday. Happy Sunday to you. Cheers to you. Thank you for being here. Welcome to another classic watch along. We are going to be doing WrestleMania 5 today. And as we get going here throughout the broadcast, we will talk about which one to do next week. So maybe something a little bit more modern. But since this is a longer than normal pay-per-view, over three and a half hours long, I'm not going to BS around for too long. So let's just do some quick shout outs, knock out some super chats, and then we will hit play on WrestleMania 5. If you're new here, what you do, if you have Peacock, if you're watching here in the States, go to Peacock, find WrestleMania 5. You want to go to Season 5, Episode 1. Like I said, three hours, 38 minutes, and 44 seconds is the runtime on this. In just a couple of minutes, we will all hit play together. Once we do, that timer right below me will begin to run. That way, if you've got Peacock ads or anything like that that you have to sit through throughout the pay-per-view, you can just match up the your Peacock timer to the timer below me, and that's how we all follow along here. But most of you in the chat already know how we do this. We're going on, I think, year number three of doing these watch-alongs. It's been a lot of fun, Sunday tradition uh, here on the channel, and we love it. It's a great time. So good to see everybody here. As always, let me hit these channel members like Tatanani and Jay Lambo, JD Jones. I think you're a new channel member. Welcome to the family, my friend. The new channel members are going to be getting regular shout outs on our Monday videos. I'm working on doing that now. So keep a lookout for that. We've got Mike Rouse in the house, Jeff McMahon, OTS Tribal Queen, and Victor Cologne. We also have Zach Palgett, my boy. Also, JJ Legg is here, Garrett Osborne, another friend, K-Dogs Kennel. Look at this. It's just a friend fest up in here. We got the Juliet. We got Isaac. We got Brandon McNeil right on. I like the names I'm seeing in here. These are all my good people. We also have Alan Carter. And, I, and Ramon Coffee. I think that hits most of the channel members there. Also, big shout out to my friend Ray Friend. Smitty is here as well. We also have We Are Pro Wrestling right on. Saxophone music. Boy, Vince loved the sax in the 80s, didn't he? You know what, We Are Pro Wrestling? I think I can match you in knowledge in 1989. I'm pretty sharp with this time period because I remember it well. Uh, David Brown's in the house as well. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, yeah, I remember on the live pay-per-view broadcast of the show, which I still have in its entirety, Howard Finkel does announce King Haku as King Tonga. I ordered this on pay-per-view in 1989 and recorded it. And I remember when Finkel said that as a kid, thinking they changed Haku's name. It didn't occur to me that Fink could just make a mistake. Uh, but that's the way the mind of a child works. Big J is here as well. Good to see Chad Riddenberry. Uh, also, Vash Starwind is here. We got Shane Bielfus. Good to see you. We have Tony as well. We got No Holds Barred. We have... Who else? Ben Espinosa, did I get you? I think I did. Uh, anybody else that might be chiming in? Hello, Roman Stone, Daniel Clark. It's Robert is also here, and so is Mike Witt, dropping in five bucks for us. Hey, Greg, the most underrated Mania of all time. Very solid card. 23 or 24 next week. I got to request Mania 2 for my old butt. I think we're going to get to Mania 2 for sure, my friend. And yeah, I think 23 or 24 sounds like the best option for next week. I almost forgot that George Morris was the first person to send a super chat, as always, on these Sunday watch-alongs. George, thank you for that earlier, man. Appreciate the fiver. Hey, Hey, Greg, how are you doing and how is Tito? WrestleMania 5, 10 out of 10. 20 people from this are gone. Uh, this is very dubbed on Anthology. I wonder about Peacock. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know about Peacock. We're going to find out. I'm really curious about that Run DMC rap, and there might be some other stuff. I mean, a big WrestleMania, Roddy Roddy Piper and Jimmy Superfly Snuka both returned on the show, which is just nuts when you think about it. And this is a very, very memorable one. I think we have the Juliet chiming in as well. Thank you for the two bucks, my friend. Scott Hall is the A&E biography tonight, and HBK and Taker is Rivals. Right on. Uh, Elizabeth and I always watch these on Monday nights because she works on Sundays, so I will not check those out tonight. But I did check out, or we checked out, the Sergeant Slaughter A&E biography last week, which was really good. I forgot to mention that in the podcast yesterday. And I am not a fan of Sarge's family. They were assholes. His ex and his daughters. I've never seen a wrestler's family not understand what their father or husband did more than this family. Like they were constantly giving him shit, playing the victim, over dramatic. Just, I just don't. His family was a turnoff to me, and I felt bad for Sarge because he seemed like a good dad. Seemed like a good dad. Worked hard. Had a great career, and his family was incredibly unappreciative to a degree that I never even thought was possible. I'm still kind of blown away by what dickheads his wife or his ex and his uh, kids were in that episode. My God. The Scott Hall one will probably be a tough watch and uh, really looking forward to that HBK and Taker rivalry. Right on. Anyway, let's get to WrestleMania 5. You guys ready? Got your fingers all queued up over there on your play buttons. I've got two fingers to queue up because I have a play button and a timer, but I am pretty much ready to go. So like I said, Peacock, WrestleMania 5, Season 5, Episode 1, 3 hours and 38 minutes is what we're looking at here. And then we're going to go 3, 2, 1, play. And that's how we're going to do things here, all right? I think I'm ready. If you guys are, let's get to it here. This is a big one, and it's going to be a long one, so we got to get started. Count of three. Here we go. Three, two, one, play. We're in. We're in. Oh, saxophone music. There it is. Vince loved it. Your powers. Explode. Oh, they did explode, too. It was really weird how after WrestleMania 3, they went back to back at this place. Citizen Trump Plaza. I love it. Jesse and uh, Gorilla doesn't get much better than that. Hot and furious. Okay. All right, Gorilla, you out of breath? Oh, opening ceremonies. Oh, I forgot about this. Rock and Robin. That's crazy. Rock and Robin is singing the national, or I'm sorry, the uh, America the Beautiful. What a choice, huh? She ain't no Whitney Houston, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I know he's going to be... Well, Daniel, if we watch 23, that fat piece of shit's going to be all over that one, too. So we're going to have to deal with him either way. No big deal. I mean, I guess they spent all their money on Run DMC. <laughs> for, I'd rather have them do this. One interesting note about this uh, arena in Atlantic City, this is kind of the unofficial birthplace, sort of, of DX. Uh, this is the first time that Sean and Triple H teamed up in a tag team to face Undertaker and Mankind in, like, September of 97. It was in this building, and that's where Sean bloodied Taker's face with a chair and kind of started going heel and putting that DX thing together with Shawn Michaels. It all was kind of birthed there but what an interesting choice for wwe to pick their women's champion rock and robin sister of jake the snake roberts by the way to sing <laughs> she better keep her daytime job <laughs> she better st i agree with jesse to be honest with you all right let's see if uh, they announce him as king, king tonga or not
they probably fixed it, I'm sure, right? <laughs> what an edit job. They should have kept it King Tonga. You know, props to the platform carriers there. I think one of those might be a young Mike Kyoto. Maybe I can't tell. I'm pretty sure Tony Chimmel is in the back there, but like carrying that thing downstairs. Also, if I was Haku sitting on top of that, I'd be a little nervous. Like, don't drop me, bitches. What's up? Undisputed AR. Good to see you, man. Everybody else that's uh, saying hello. I'll catch up these hellos in a second. Watching Haku make his entrance right now. Huh. Pretty sure uh, Haku's facing Herc here. <laughs> the King Haku. Completely clueless to what's about to transpire four years later in WCW with the, th with the Shockmaster. Had no idea, apparently. Dude laughed his ass off on the uh, earthquake dark side of the ring. Oh, what's Bobby going to say? Are y'all bowing? I mean, I'd bow if Haku told me to in person, but he can't hurt me through the TV. I checked. I actually kind of low-key liked Hercules' uh, babyface theme. I liked it as a kid. I mean, I cannot believe how, like, I was in fucking 11, man. I didn't have any hair under my armpits yet. I had never kissed a girl. I don't even think I'd been in a real fight yet. Wasn't any good at sports yet. Oh, I was getting there. But not really. Uh, still a fucking nerd. Still loving wrestling. Still a Hulkamaniac. Hated doing my homework. Would always miss the bus. You know, shit like that. Typical 11-year-old stuff. I wrote down my predictions for this pay-per-view. I had my... My mom had like an old, an old typewriter, like, like not even like a modern typewriter, but an old one. And she like gave it to me in my room and I would like play with it. And I typed out on that WrestleMania five predictions about like a week before the show, folded them up, put them in a sealed envelope and put it on the table in the living room. And then during the show, my dad opened it up and read it and fucking could not believe that I predicted strike force breaking up. He was like, how the fuck did you know that? I'm like, cause I watched the show, dad. And I can tell. Even at 11, I was sharp. Yo, I want to thank... Oh, look out. Look out, Herc. I want to thank the Juliet, who really loves to pop in here and just give out memberships, hooking up Red Raven Rucker today. Thank you so much for that, as always, Juliet. Red Raven Rucker, welcome to the family uh, maybe again. Happy to have you, man. Yeah, I guess Herc's theme does sort of resemble Miro's, yeah. Didn't think about that, but... Ramon Coffee. oh yeah, I was playing Nintendo back in 1989. 1989, baby. Nintendo. I still play Nintendo. You want me to beat Paperboy without being killed once? I can do it. Hercules love to do those uh, kind of dancing elbow drops. 
I didn't love him in the powder blue, though, but I guess it was just because he was face. Well, this is dumb, Hercules. Hmm. Ooh. Well, I don't understand. I mean, by this point, we're talking 1989. Hercules is a wily veteran by this point. So why would he slowly stalk and turn his back on an opponent like Haku for that long amount of time? Treated, oh, yeah, that's right. He was uh, sold. He was sold to the Million Dollar Man. He's my slave. Yeah, we see him, Jesse. Oh, Jesse, Jesse hooked him up with those seats. I was trying to think, what did Haku do at WrestleMania 4? He was in the... Uh, he was in the six man with uh, the Bulldogs and Heenan and the Islanders. OTS, the, Gar the commentary on the Garvin match is funny. I can't wait to hear that. I don't remember. Garvin and uh, Bravo, right? <laughs> what would a gorilla know about bear hugging? Why is it dark? Oh, there we go. Good to see Surge in here as well. Hello to you. Keith Hubert. Ramon Coffey's here. Powder blue means you were finished. Yeah. If he gets it through there, he's going to be able to reverse this. Heenan screaming at King Haku. They don't let him break it open. It's already broken open. What a power display by Hart. And the fans appreciate it. Oh. Yeah, he left himself wide open on that one. And there's the experience of King Haku. Hmm. Oh, who's that? Oh, that's Earl. Yeah, Herc fought the Warrior at WrestleMania 4. That was when Warrior first came in, and I remember when they did the thing on TV with the two where a Warrior, like, broke the chain, like, snapped the chain in half. Oh, look out, Haku missed. Interesting match to do first, you know? Especially since coming up later, we've got that, like, Rockers and Twin Towers match. I just started with that. It is kind of funny how, like, even during this time, Jesse and Gorilla would talk about WrestleManias as if they had been going on forever. You know, there's only the fifth one. At this point, WrestleManias are as old as AEW. You know, they're pretty new. It goes hurt, hurt to the top. Not even close. Eight a kick. Crescent kick. I'd rather eat a crescent roll. They're delicious. Is he going headbutt? 
I don't know what he was going for, but Hurt got out of the way. Nice. Hurt got him. Yeah, Hurt lifted his shoulder. Good job, Herc. Are you the new king now? King Hercules. Hercules getting a win at WrestleMania. I think that's his only one. I think he lost at WrestleMania 2 to Steamboat. Lost at 3, I think, to Billy Jack at DQ, I think it was. Lost to the Warrior, too, I think, in a DQ. And he'd lose the next year. And he'd lose the year after that at WrestleMania 7. I think this is Hercules' only victory at WrestleMania. We are pro wrestling. How's my math? A big win for the slave. Jesus Christ, Jesse. You want to be just tossing that word around like that? God damn. All right, Shawn Michaels and the Rockers. Shawn Michaels, you still got the baby fat. He's so white and paley, that hair. Shawn Michaels is a child in this. He's hoarse, all raspy because he was partying the night before. Probably sucking off. My, never mind. Oh, I like the SM and MJ on their... Uh, I never noticed that before. Hmm. Marty felt more polished at this point. Better on the mic. Even looked better. Sean's all over the place. He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's just like what's Sean doing? <laughs> yeah, we're coming. Grease lightning. Yeah, okay. Hey, and at least we get to hear Jive Soul Bro, which I think is my all-time favorite WWE song of all time ever in history, of all time even in China. Jive Soul Bro is the one. I hate how Hakeem would walk around going like this. Hey, he's doing it. Look. <laughs> is that how Vince... Like, I can see, like, a production meeting. Vince like, here's what you need to do. Because that's what Vince thinks that people from Africa do. I guess. I hate Akeem. <laughs> and gang now with that. Like, he, like, Akeem's got like regular hair. Just seeing the one man gang with hair like that was heartbreaking to me as a fan. Even as a kid, I liked the one man gang. <clears throat> so I hated this. Tag team specialist. <laughs> They're gonna need every specialty they can get. We just, I just talked about this match with uh, with Brian from Wrestling with Regret when we uh, ranked Shawn Michaels uh, WrestleMania matches this week. He had this one way up, like number six or seven or something like that. And it is a great match. It's fun. And what I was saying in that video was that for 1989, this was a rare thing to see a team this big going against a team this small. The year before, it was Demolition and Strike Force, and they were acting like that was a massive mis mismatch, and it really wasn't. Tito and, and Rick Martell are not tiny guys, but this is even crazier. And so these were not really common matches to see two quick little guys against two giant guys. Nowadays, it's, it happens every fucking week, but... Tatanani, who did Hercules beat at WrestleMania? Just Haku, that's it. Lost every other match, I think. Oh, one, four, and one. Okay, we are pro wrestling. That one must have been... So that means the WrestleMania three was a double count out. That's what it was. I was thinking it was a DQ because Billy Jack got busted open, but I, you're right, it was a double count out. But only one victory for the Herkster. At, oh! Nice drop kick there. Wow.
Shawn Michaels and Bossman rarely crossed paths either because when Bossman came back in 98, Shawn was retired. It was daydreaming. And I'm pretty sure Akeem One Man Gang is definitely has to have previous history with Sean and Marty. For sure, they cross paths in the territories. They had to have, because I think they worked a lot of the same areas. Look at Sean doing a moonwalk. Sean, you can't dance. <laughs> what did Triple H say? This thing's pretty much all he's got. <laughs> uh, Look at there. You know, they really are. I mean, so far the Rockers have applied the best strategy they could. Couldn't have gone better for them so far. What was he thinking about? Gorilla keeps thinking everybody's daydreaming over there. Mike Witt, it might be. Appreciate the two bucks. Was this the last uh, WWF show, Big John Stud? I don't even remember the story. I don't know why he came in and was gone so quickly. I mean, he came in and won the first Royal Rumble, or the first pay-per-view Royal Rumble anyway. And they looked like they were putting him into a feud with Andre that was going to reverse their roles from a few years ago, where Andre was the face and Stud was the heel. And now, like, Andre's the pussy heel and Stud's the strong baby face. It was really weird. And Stud would be the referee here later. But nothing ever panned out. I don't even know if Stud and Andre had matches on live events. I, they might have. But Stud was uh, was no match for Andre back in the day. Oh, that was good. So it was weird seeing him come back and being presented so strong. Ah, oh, shit. Mike Rouse, my bad. I must not have... I'm, I'm supposed to remember to turn ads off for these videos. I think I forgot. Let's turn them off. Off. There we go. They are off. Ooh. <laughs> I did not know, so this would have been 89. So yeah, at this time, in 89, I, I was not aware that Joey Morella was Gorilla Monsoon's son. So it made a lot of sense as I got older hearing how much shit Jesse would always give to Gorilla about Joey Morella. What a rib. I think I knew by the time he died, but I didn't know yet. Not enough mustard. God, who's that little kid next to Citizen Trump? Is that one of his dumb fucking sons? Is that uh, Junior or Eric? It might be. Look out. He's going to miss. Hmm. Tags to Sh to Marty. Or, I'm sorry, to Sean. And they got Akeem on the ropes here. Have I missed the Sean Akeem clothesline? I hope I didn't. Oh. Oh. 
Damn, down goes Akeem. That idiot Morella. Okay, maybe this is the clothesline. I think it is. Watch this. This is definitely it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that still holds up as a really... Yeah, he did decapitate him. Oh, boss man's going all the way up. We got a flying Ray trailer. He missed. There you go. There you go. Down he goes. Oh, down goes Akeem. Look out. Uh oh, look out, boss man. They're still doing it. Oh, they kind of missed, but kind of hit that. Oh. They came in for a double drop kick on boss man. I'm Sean. Oh. That was basically a power bomb from Boss Man. And here comes uh, the 747. Air Africa. Good match, though. And I remember at the time never thinking Rockers were going to win this, but they put up a hell of a lot better of a fight than I thought they would. Shivani! I forgot Shivani's here in 89. Look at DiBiase's blonde hair. But who wears sparkly tuxedos with no shirt under it? You're not even that finely groomed. You got a beard. You got shaggy ass hair over your ears. Finely groomed. What, you got a bikini wax down there? You probably do. Most Christians do. Okay, okay, they just cut him off. Enough of you. Rest in peace, Virgil. Yes, absolutely. Oh, he's going to go talk to Donald Trump. That's a very beautiful belt. They, they tell me it's a tremendous belt. The best people made the belt. Really the best people. The only per person that could have made the belt better than those people was probably be me. Because I'm the greatest. Why does he do that? What is what is that? Virgil! Shout out to Virgil. We love you. Rest in peace, Virgil. Well, he said self-proclaimed, so... If DiBiase had so much money, he should pay off the Fink to not say self-proclaimed. Fink would take the money. You don't think Howard would take the money? Hell yes, he would. I like Brutus's theme, too. He's got the barber bag with him. I remember the previous year, I was convinced, absolutely convinced that he was beating Honky Tonk Man for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 4. I'm still kind of bummed he didn't, but it did give us the Warriors moment at SummerSlam, but still.
You know what I would have done? I would have put the Intercontinental title on Beefcake. And then after Savage drops the world title to Hogan, I'd have Savage beat Beefcake and win back the Intercontinental title just for fun. I wish I could go back in time and rebook 1988-1989. Oh yeah, I guess it does have a little bit of Seinfeld-ish tones to it. That's right. We got two sleeper holds here. We got sleeper from sleeper from Beefer and the Million Dollar Dream. <laughs> Jesse's giving Gorilla shit for his gambling. It's a good aerial shot, though, or overhead shot of the crowd, though. It's not a huge arena, but it looks big from that from that vantage point. <laughs> bought a whole block of tickets. Wow. Big start for Beefcake. <laughs> I think that's why they called him the Booty Man, because he would always shake his booty in the matches. Beefcake? Brute Eye is always in excellent condition. I mean, I don't remember too much of how... I feel like this was just a match they made for the show. They would do that sometimes, but I don't remember any issue on TV with these guys. That led to this match. I want to just say it was Brutus and Million Dollar Man. <laughs> That's it. There was no recap package of anything that happened prior because I don't think anything did, if I remember right. I mean, they might have had one confrontation on TV or something, but I don't remember it. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. What's up, uh, Andy Linnell? Got your 2K24 copy on Friday. That's cool. I wish I knew anything about modern video games. I don't. Ah, he was on a plane with uh, Farrah Fawcett. Oh, John. What? This is for real? Apparently, this is John Cena at the Oscars. Naked. Buck naked. Me and Elizabeth, we're going to watch that Ricky Stenicki shit. I've never even seen a trailer for it. I just heard it's good, and I think it's on Amazon Prime. So we're going to watch that. Thank you for that, Deshaun. You're the one that uh, sent me that. <laughs> Thank you for that, Stephanie Hypes. That's funny. And for those wondering, this was 91 felonies ago, two impeachments ago, half a billion dollars in fines ago, uh, and several porn stars and hush money payments ago is when this took place. 
for those who uh, were wondering how long ago WrestleMania Five was. The referee never even admonished Virgil. I want to see Gorilla give shit to his own son. But this is Earl in there. I never understood. I never understood the Million Dollar Man. He would do that kind of falling down punch, which I don't understood how that made it more effective, like the way he was delivering it. DiBiase was super good in the ring, though. Come on, Beefer, get up. Here he comes. I don't even read. The funny thing is, I don't remember the finish. I want to say this is a DQ or count out. I don't think we get a finish here. Zane G, good to see you, my friend. What's up, dude? Happy you're here. Way back, going way back to 1989. Nope. Brutus got it. Yeah, me too. I don't know how they squeeze in so many matches on this card. Double clothesline. Yeah, there's no... Yeah, the, that's... Gorilla makes, makes a good point here. There's no stakes in this match. This is... A lot of WrestleManias were like this, you know? They just announced matches. No build, no nothing. Just... Two stars, got to get them on the card. Here you go. They did the next, same thing the next year with like Tito Santana and Barbarian and shit like that. They're just, they're just throwing matches out there. Rick Rude and Snuka. No real story or issue there. It's just matches. Used to be that way. Now when it happens, like, what's going on? Tony Khan just made the match and didn't announce it. I'm like, well, that's what it used to be. Wrestling isn't just the Attitude Era to now. <laughs> there, there was wrestling before then, too. That's it. Million Dollar Dream. It'd be funny to see Beefcake. Yeah, Beefcake getting a haircut. Come on, Beefer. I mean, this is essentially the same move as the Cobra Clutch, too. Same move. DiBiase took, it's weird that I know this, but he took a turnbuckle face bumps well. He always sold them well. See? <laughs> oh, wow. See? See, I'm right, aren't I? Look at that. Flare bump in the middle. He's going for it. And he's got it. Okay, what do they do here? There's got to be a... Something happens. Virgil, does he get... Yeah, there's Virgil. Oh, no, he might not win. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. I was thinking DiBiase might roll up Beefcake, but... Oh, yeah. Come on. 
See, I talked about this when Virgil passed away. I talked about how strong he was booked at first, and then he turned into a wimp. And he was in wimp mode now. Brood I know sold all that shit from Virgil. Virgil was already 52 uh, at this time. That shit about him lying about his age is hilarious. Coming, came, coming out after he died that he was really 10 years older. That's classic. There we go. It's going to be a double count out. Double count out. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince McMahon has chosen not to beat either one of these guys. This contest is a draw. Oh, DiBiase got posted. You better get up on out of there because Beefer is going to get his uh, shears out. There's no hair to take off of Virgil, but there there could be a couple of other inches that Beefcake could shave off of Virgil, if you know what I mean. All right, we got a atomic drop to the human tripod, Virgil. Hey, leave Virgil alone, Beefcake. You at, what are you going to do? You're going to put him asleep? You can't even cut his hair unless you shave his bush. Please don't. Oh, good. Here comes DiBiase to make the save. Oh, he's a double Naga knocker him. Or he's going to try. Oh, no. He's just going to go for the... He gave the signal for the... Oh, no. He was talking about the shears. I thought he was, like, giving the signal for the double Naga knocker. But instead, he just meant the... <laughs> just suspend. He's got a weapon. He's got a fucking knife in there. No guns, no knives, just hedge clippers. That would be a good shirt, wouldn't it? Next time I drive somewhere, I'm rocking out to Beefcake's theme in my car. Windows down. It's crazy seeing little kids in the crowd, knowing that they're probably my age. Fucking nuts, man. The brunch. Oh, the bushies. Look how nice they're dressed. They look like they're going to like rugby practice or something. They're ready. I like that the bushwhackers, they just present them as like Samoans or something, like just savages who just eat with their hands. <laughs> just rub shit all over their faces. Fucking complete apes. Whatever. Eating raw chicken heads and shit. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> Lord Alfred, you are something else. Uh, Lord Alfred. I found Lord Alfred very annoying. Even as a kid. This guy's a fucking goofball. Never seems like he knows what the fuck he's doing. Ever. There's Ray Rougeau. We're a bit, look at Ray. He's got that very focused look on his face. They're all American boys. From Quebec. Jacques Rougeau, I think, is the only person in WWE history to do his own vocals on three of his theme songs. Rougeau's Mountie Quebecers. Hey, look at Pedro Morales acting as an agent up there on the left-hand side. That's awesome. Shout out to Pedro.
I remember that. You see how Butch uh, kind of tripped there? That step. Everybody would trip over that step. Hitting the joy juice. <laughs> these guys are on the joy juice. Look at these fans. <laughs> uh oh, they got Jimmy. Now, didn't we? We just watched a Royal Rumble this year, right? Where it was Rujos and Bushwhackers. So, this is the second time in just a couple of months that we as a group are watching Rujos and Bushwhackers. That's nice. Jimmy's like, give me back my jacket. Oh, they're going to try to tear it up. Oh, no. Good. They're all American boys, but... All they had was the flags. Oh. It is weird why Jimmy Hart wasn't managing Bravo at this time. He would soon, but Frenchie Martin had him at this point. It's like they listen to Barry Manilow. Well, Mandy. I mean, come on. Mandy's a great song. Especially now because the Rougeaus are American boys. Well, no, that's not really that. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Zane! What up, bro? Thanks for that 10 bucks. Not that it has anything to do with the video, but would you be okay with a Lesnar return? Being that there's a rumor that he was acquitted... With the, McMahon, with the McMahon allegations. I could be wrong. No harm needed. Uh, I don't think he was acquit Like, acquitted would be, you know, there's some sort of court or something. You know, I don't think... Uh, I don't think he's really been acquitted of anything. I just think that if they're going to reintroduce him slowly back into WWE, I wouldn't be surprised. I heard about the return to the roster page. And I myself mentioned how I was wondering how they were going to completely ignore him. Because he does fall in that weird area. I'm not absolving or condoning any of Brock's involvement at all. Uh, but he's more of a, kind of an accessory. He's not, he's not John Laurinaitis bad, but he's still implemented pretty directly. And it's, fuck it, I don't even know, man. I don't even know what to say about it. It's WWE's call. I'm glad I don't have to make this decision. And if they are going to bring him back, I don't even know. I don't even know how it's going to work. But I think basically it's the severity of his specific crime. And I think about as far as it goes for him is he was kind of aware that Vince did some things and Vince might have shared a couple of grisly details with him and that's kind of it, but there's probably a lot of people like that that are still running around that company with a job that have not been dealt with yet. And we don't even know what the full consequences of that whole situation is even going to be yet. So, yeah, I don't know. Oh, God! <laughs> I don't want to rewind it, but maybe you do. What? That is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Butch. No, Luke. They, uh, Jesse and Gorilla don't know which Bushwhacker is which either, but I think Luke is the one in the ring. Butch is the darker haired one. But when Rougeau, when Raymond went to body slam Luke, Luke gave him a little... Fucking squeeze in the cock and balls like a a, a tender one, like a little. Whoo, here you go. Rewind it. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Fucking grabbing my junk. 
That's what you called it last match, Gorilla. Well, he was dangerous. You're not going to beat these bushwhackers with an abdominal stretch, I don't believe, Jess, because the word submit is not in their vocabulary. Gorilla, you can beat anybody with a submission hold if you get it on. Like, I don't wow, know. Raymond. I liked Raymond so much more than Jacques. Nice dressing kick there by Raymond. <laughs> Uh oh, look out, battering ram. I never understood why this move worked. Stomach breaker. D double stomach breaker. That's exactly what it was. And that's it. And the Rougeau's win. Why did the Rougeau's always have, or the Bushwhackers always have the Rougeau's numbers? The Bushwhackers win. That's messed up. That's another match. I'm not sure if we really need it on this card, but we got it anyway. Sean Mooney. Oh, he's somewhere down there. Oh, there he is. Look at those WrestleMania hats. Ew! Oh, you can see Shivani's all. <laughs> nah! Oh, God! That's a sentence you don't hear every day. No one knows what it's like to be licked by a bushwhacker. I'm glad I've never had that experience. Aren't you all glad you've never been licked by a bushwhacker? Maybe some of you have. Andy, you probably have. Seem like you'd be into that. Ray, you too. Daniel, don't get me started about you. Hmm. Crowd popped, though. They were into it. <laughs> yeah, so much for COVID. Yeah, that match was a fucking mess. I'm glad it's over. Who is this? Oh! Mr. Perfect. Now, as a fan... This see he tripped over that step too. See that step is a nightmare. I think Brett watch when Brett comes he'll trip over it. But yeah, th this is the first time I saw Kurt wear the singlet. He was just wearing trunks before. This instantly suit him. This was perfect. And his opponent The fact that he died in this outfit. It's got pretty good music. The blue blazer. Yeah. When... Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know this is Owen Hart at the time. I don't think. <laughs> Larry the Axe is around hanging around that weekend, I guess. I mean, these guys had a WrestleMania match, but never really had any sort of interaction beyond this. And some 
there were some other, I'm sure, Blue Blazer and Mr. Perfect matches, but by the time Owen came back in the early 90s as Owen Hart with High Energy and Jim Neidhart and whatnot, Perfect was already kind of back out of the ring again. And then off WCW a few years later when Owen was like a big star. So we... <laughs> oh, they're speculating on who he is. I'm wondering if they... I love that. What a counter. Marty Jannetty could do one of those, too. Nice. Oh, wow, that's so good. Oh, that's why I love how perfect can bump, you know? Oh, Owen kind of crotched himself there in that bottom rope. But I wonder if they were maybe going to eventually let it be known who he was. But it would have been cool if we could have gotten like if Owen would have gotten on the map like a year earlier and we could got like a King of Hearts Owen Hart against like a 93 perfect or something could have could have been good. Owen, from what I remember, I think just took a break, Smitty, because it just wasn't working out for him. And then I think he was like going to maybe go be a firefighter or something. And then he got went, wrestled to Germany or something and then decided to give it another shot, I guess. Something like that. Well, what homework is there to do? You don't know shit about him. Nice hammerlock, little northern lightsy type of thing. Timmy White, shout out, by the way. Referee in this thing. High risk, but not for this guy. Oh, oh. Got the knees up. I like the Mr. P on his... uh. Boots. Chili P is my signature. That's all part of the game. Sort of took the starch. Took the starch. You don't want the starch out of you. You need that. <laughs> Serge, did Perfect and Brock ever wrestle? Yeah, on an airplane. Well, you know, Gorilla Wally's got this pressure hold on. I gotta do my normal. Say hi to my four biggest fans in Minneapolis. Terry Tyrell, Jaden Jeremiah. Terry Tyrell, Jaden Jeremiah. What are you talking about? I never understood, really, that Jesse was shouting out his family. Oh, good. Jesse gets to do... Yeah, that was another thing they did for a couple of WrestleManias there. Maybe f three of them? Or four of them? Where Jesse would just get up and pose up on the balcony. Oh, nice. Belly to belly. That was a gut wrench, Gorilla. That was. Nice crucifix. Hey, open your eyes, Owen. Oh. What a forearm. Perfect plex coming up for sure. That's going to be it for the Blazer. And he got him. Big win for Hennig. Oh, 
and his record stays intact, Gorilla. Perfect. It certainly does. Big. Let's go back and take a look at some of the action that went down earlier on in this one. What a match this was. And there you see the crucifix right there. Pound into it by the Blue Blazer. Here was almost a major upset. Look how close. Wow, he did get it off, though. Yeah, and then Owen started John with Tim White. Yeah, that was vicious. That rivaled the Akeem shot on Sean earlier. That was really, really brutal. Oh, it's time, but they faded to black. Oh, it is time for his surprise. Did you see her? <laughs> they bleeped out WWE. A self-professed major Hollywood star. <laughs> I love that WWF banner. I want that. Yeah, don't be falling off. <laughs> so that's where the booth is, huh? Right up there. I didn't notice. I didn't even realize really where it was. <laughs> Jesse just got to salute the crowd. Yep, that's his big surprise, Ray. Oh, his lordship. Good. What sentences are you going to stumble through this time, Lord Alfred? <laughs> Mr. Fuji. I entered just now. 5K in a tux and a hat. <laughs> Fuji getting back in the ring in 89 was wild. There he goes. He's got a head start. He's got his cane too. <laughs> I didn't appreciate the comedy of this, I don't think, when I was 11. I appreciate it now. This is hysterical. They're going to film him running across the finish line now. Later on, not even sweating. What a physical specimen he is. Did it in 1930. <laughs> he still seems really fresh. Under 20 minutes, he did it in. He must have been working out very, very hard. Let me tell you. WrestleMania rap. Uh, I don't remember anything about this song. I don't think the audio is great. That oh, doesn't sound bad. Wrestlemania. 
WrestleMania. I'm surprised WWE didn't try to try to put them in the Hall of Fame. It sounds like it's the beat to Tricky, I think, but I can barely hear. There they are. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, the Morton Downey Jr. thing is coming up too. They had crazy shit on this one. This was one of the cooler things. What I do remember about this is watching this in my living room live on one of those TVs that sat on the floor that was enclosed in one of those wooden cases type of thing, you know what I'm talking about, that your grandma has. I struggled to hear it. I can hear it better here. But it was tough to hear this on 1989 tech. Or electronics, I should say. I can hear this so much better now. Where's Trump? Is he dancing? <laughs> Watching the... Look at the stiffs in the front row. They don't know what to do. It does. I, I thought it was Wild Thing, too. It was kind of a combination of, like, Tricky and <laughs> Wild Thing, the beat. Fucking Tone Loke comes out there. I'm going to mark out. And then they would do business again, right? They remixed DX's theme, right? Did WWE put them in the celebrity wing? Have they done Hall of Fame yet? I feel like they fit the criteria to be in the celebrity wing. Oh, 89. I want to go back to there. I want to go to there. I still have a couple of the cassette albums. Oh, okay, yeah, this was crazy. Survivor Series night. The double turn. And me not understanding at the time what a double turn was. And having trouble computing it in my head. I thought when I was 11 that this whole thing right here was Mr. Fuji turning face. I didn't get it. I didn't realize I was seeing a double turn. Now they got counted out because that axe is pissed. I did not pull that rope. Uh, they're, they're, I had I was watching with my cousins this night who were visiting, and they just loved the yellow guys. They kept talking about the yellow guys, and the yellow guys are just up there going, "What's going on?" And the yellow guys survived until the very end. They could not believe it. Uh oh. Oh. Slamming Fuji on the floor. Fans seem to be into it here. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Oh, 
as a kid, I just assumed Powers of Pain as baby faces were going to take the titles from Demolition. I thought they were going to be WWE's answer to the Road Warriors. And then they reversed it here. And Demolition stayed strong and Powers of Pain never won the titles. It was crazy. This is after Baron Von Raschke left. This was here. This here is the same night that uh, Hogan and Savage split up. I'll never forget those lights, those main event crowd lights they would do. There they are. Look how good they look. Oh, my God. I love them. Third favorite WWE tag team of all time, Demolition. Fooge the Stooge. Powers of Pain were awesome last year. I met them at WrestleCon. They were so cool. You little overstuffed rat. The titles are actually on the line here in a handicap match, which was another rarity in at least WWE at the time. Look at Fuji. Still in good shape. Look at him. Fuji was no joke back in the day. He wasn't even that past his in-ring days at this point. I feel like Sting was older at Revolution than Fuji is here. Who's got Fuji's 1989 age? Who wants to give it to me? Here they come. Watch them steps, boys. This is such an awkward entrance. Like, having the steps like that? <laughs> They're coming down on carpet steps. He was 45 here? No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was way older than that. He was not younger than me in this match. No. I'm looking it up myself. Fucking Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fudgy. How old are you? Born in 1934, so this would have been 1989, which would have made him 60... No, it would have made him 55. 55 is what he was here, not 45. Fifty-five. Not. Five, I was about to say. That sounds about right. Yeah, six years younger than Sting or whatever. Six years younger than Billy Gunn. Oh, Roman, that was a guess. That's actual salt because it didn't make a powdery thing. <laughs> Classic. 
There aren't too many evil spirits he needs to chase away from here. You're one. <laughs> well, maybe. Oh, I love those days. The two power. The two powerhouses. They're all powerhouses. These probably are the two biggest powerhouses, though. Belidian Warlord. I mean, last year it was Demolition that was so much bigger, and Jesse wouldn't shut the fuck up about how they overpowered Strike Force. Now he's kind of acting like they're the smaller team. Well, that's true. Boy, they really have that ring miked. The Juliet, that's very true. 45 looked different in the 1980s. When I was a kid, I thought 40 was old. I was like super old. I thought you were going to die if you were 40. Like you could just die at any time. Oh, yeah, because he's in the corner. Hell, yeah, he is. Nice. Now they got the Barbarian. I love the Barbarian. <laughs> we got one half of the second head shrinkers in there. Crowd's very quiet for this one. Yeah, he was actually. I like kind of how Demolition, who was previously just a powerhouse ass kicking tag team, is wrestling a more uh, technical tag team wrestling style. Cutting the ring off, fast tagging, body part stuff, shit like that. Isolation. <laughs> See, gorillas like I got WrestleMania jitters in the garden. I'm like, you were on commentary. <laughs> they were still calling you Gino back then. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, Fuji's been Look at that Yeah, now Powers of Pain have done what Demolition just did. We are pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah, Fuji. Uh, didn't he? I think he had like a match with Bobby Heenan or something, didn't he, Mr. Fuji? They would do some crazy shit, especially like on live events or just like uh, videotape stuff or whatever. There's some hidden gems out there to blow your mind. Oh, he's in there. He's doing stuff. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of on Jesse's side on this one. Gorilla's like, he's only getting in there when his opposition is hurt. And Jesse's basically like, no shit, dumbass. That's what I liked about their chemistry. Is that in this particular situation, Jesse is right in this argument. Jesse's winning this argument. Gorilla's losing it. Like, if the title's on the line, why would you have Fuji in there <laughs> against a fresh axe or smash? That's idiotic. Soften him up for... Oh, shit. Tag to Fuji. Yeah. What does he do here? Sp leg drop, maybe? Yeah. Oh. Oh, he just slid into that. That's a weird bump. Oh, he's over there. He's there. I know. I can't believe Demolition has never made an appearance of any kind. There we go. Tag to smash. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, Smash going to work. When I was a kid, Smash was my favorite of the two Demolition, but as an adult, I appreciate Bill Eadie way more. <laughs> oh, what's he got? He's got more. This is the, this is the powdery substance. Some more salt. Oh, that might be real salt. Oh. Oh yeah, they're gonna put down Fuji. I forgot. Now there's a problem. I was so happy. I did not want to see. Oh, they did not even hit him. <laughs> Demolition retains. I wish Demolition would have had a longer of a run, but the run that they had was pretty memorable because they were always involved in the title situation. Dropped it a couple times briefly just to win it back. Dropped it to the Busters, won it back. Dropped it to Colossal Connection, won it back. Had the titles there for three WrestleManias, four, five, and six. And then it all just went away. Hmm. <clears throat> is this all Macho does is just go crazy in his dressing room? <laughs> That's what Savage is doing. He's just going ballistic. All right, it's Dino Bravo and Ronnie Garvin time. I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat>
Well, that's all part of it, Gorilla. Huh? And I would think it get dangerous too. His opponent from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing 242 pounds, Rookie Ronnie Garvin. Oh, I like this match now. That's going to be interesting. You got an out and out tough guy right there in Ronnie Garvin, and there you got a man with unlimited power potential. Oh, just in time for Superfly with Pat Patterson right in the background. I forgot this is where they reintroduced him. Thanks for waiting, guys. I had to go leave and say goodbye to Elizabeth real quick. And this was, again, completely out of the blue because they didn't pre-announce this. Piper you knew about, but you didn't know about Snuka. And to me, personally, I thought this was crazy and awesome because I was a big Snooka fan. Like He was one of my earliest memories, too, because he was the biggest babyface prior to Hogan in the company. And then he went inexplicably AWOL. I, well, I didn't know where he went because it's not like you had internet and I was only a little piece of shit child so it's not like i was following the dirts back in the day so i didn't know where he was i just knew he was gone and then all of a sudden he's back came right out in the middle of a random match hello i'm here and then left i would have had him mix it up with someone and there goes uh so it's dino bravo and ronnie garvin but I thought it was interesting that Piper and Snuka, two guys with a, a crazy history, both returned on the same show. And I don't know if one led to the other or if when Piper wanted to come back, if it got Vince thinking, oh, let's get Snuka back too. And, you know, fucking murder. <clears throat> yeah, comments for me, it was an interesting choice of placement for that return, you know? I would have maybe just had him do an interview backstage with Mean Gene. At this time, I would like to welcome back and do a little interview. And then maybe somebody confronts him. You know how, like, Mark Marrow debuted at WrestleMania 12? Like, something like that. Or book him in a return match. <laughs> they had all these bullshit matches why not just book snooka against bravo or any other heel that can eat a loss Big Dub, I don't recall why he left WWE. He was not fired, I don't think. He was gone shortly after WrestleMania 1. I don't remember him very many times after that. But he was in AWA, and I think he went some other places, but I don't recall why. I mean, maybe he was fired, but shit, I just don't, I don't remember. <laughs> this match, I like Ronnie Garvin, but this one is just. Look at that pinning combination. Bravo is so thick, too. Sleeper. And he's got it in the middle of the ring, Gorilla. Slapped it right on. 
haven't seen him use this of late. But look at Bravo easily getting over to the road. That extra wing advantage is able to do that. And the unlimited strength. Comments for me, yeah, oh, Ronnie Garvin was way more interesting to watch outside of WWE. His little stint here in, in, in 89, he was just there for like a year. It was okay. But he did a lot more. He was way more involved in storylines, bigger angles, championships, shit like that in the NWA. Or he, here he was mid-card at best. And the, the feud with Valentine was fun, I thought. But other than that, his WWE run was meaningless, really, in the grand scheme of his career. <laughs> Don't try to take credit. Oh, side suplex. He got him. Big win for Dino, knocking off Ronnie at WrestleMania. Oh, Frenchie. Now, Frenchie did used to wrestle. Oh, God. The stomp. Oh. He, tre he trembles. The Garvin stomp. I love it. Well, Ronnie being a ref in WWE was a cover-up for his injury. He had an injury, so they kept the storyline going by having him torment Greg Valentine as a referee. He was also a ring announcer once. I think got involved in some other way, too. So it, may, it did make sense in uh, the confines of the storyline. Otherwise, they would, have to, they would have had to table the whole thing until he got healthy. The Garvin stomp. Oh, oh, right on the inner innards there. <laughs> That's what you do to somebody on the streets, man. <laughs> Once you get them down, you you garv them, Garvin stomp them. <laughs> yeah, the, the six packs weren't that. Frequent back in these days. Rude kind of had one. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, I like this match. Two really tough dudes. Girls in cars, baby. And you're like, geez, Greg, what, do you listen to this every day or something? Yes, I do. And look, they're back together. I knew it, though. I was 11, and I knew this shit wasn't going to last. And I liked Strike Force. I did. I was a fan. I wish they would have had a longer run. They were way better than the Can-Ams. Martel was such a huge upgrade from Tom Zink. Or, I'm sorry, Santana was such a huge upgrade from Tom Zink. And back when you're a kid, you know, a year is a long time. It feels like a long time. So for me in my head, it had been a really long time since they had teamed together when it had only just been a few months because Martel got injured and was on the shelf for a while. And now he's back and the team's back together. And it was like they immediately started making it known that there might be some trouble there. The Busters. Holy Moses. And this is a pretty good match, too, on paper, you know. Wow. 
In the previous year at WrestleMania, they lost the tag team titles to Demolition in another match that was very obvious to me as a kid. Demolition winning the titles from them did not surprise me. But then Martel got hurt, and then they did an injury angle like during a rematch where he hurt his neck, and that put him out of action for a while. I think he got some surgery or something, and then came back, and the team is back together. And that's when they decided to move Martel on as a singles gimmick. Clone Force in the house. What's up, man? Strike Force versus Rockers would have been great. I would have loved to see it. Strike Force sounds like a cheesy low budget movie. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, if you want to see something that'll crack you up, you got to watch the Can Am Connection. Watch, like, the Can Am Connection vignettes. Look them up on YouTube. Like, it can't even be described, really. It's exquisite. They're both shirtless. There's mirrors involved, I think. Their hair is extremely fluffy. It's something else. <laughs> oh. Oh, nice tag. Bulldoggy. Man, Tully Blanchard and Tino Santana. That's just a fun match. And double figure four. I love it. It's a figure eight or something. Smart by Arn. Can't remember. I mean... Seeing Rick Martell and Arn Anderson in the ring together, that's another rare thing. I can't think of too many times when that's been a thing. This might be their only match together of any kind. We are pro wrestling. When would Martell and Arn Anderson have ever crossed paths other than this brief era here? Martel did work some nitros. Oh, there's a tag to Martel. Boom. And there you go. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, that flying forearm, Martel ate it. That would be fun. A good old-fashioned takeover black and gold watch-along. I'm into that. We could maybe arrange that. Martel's still trying to shake it off. And he's being a total asshole about it. This is one of my biggest pet peeves in wrestling. A move like this is what turned Dusty Rhodes babyface back in the day in Florida. But, like, I never understood, like, in tag team wrestling, if you catch if you catch a stray one from your partner by accident, you don't have to break up the team over it. Like, you're in a, you're in a very physical match. Punches are being thrown. And it's team rules. You might hit, get some friendly fire occasionally. Like, it sucks. It sucks, but it's what happens. But so many times you see teams getting so butthurt at each other. I'm like, we should drop that trope. I want to see a major mistake between a team. I would deliberately book that into a match to have a team member completely wipe out the other team member and don't have it lead to anything. <laughs> just after the match, just having fist bump. That's a, and like the one guy going like, I'm so sorry. Like, that's ah, all good, man. Don't worry about it. And then that's it. No team breakup in the future, and that doesn't mean the seeds are planted for a future breakup. Nothing. It just happens. It happens. Shake it off. Shake it off. Of course I'm a Swifty. Okay. Of course I am. What kind of question is that? Yeah, but that could be up the expense of losing the match. 
How is Tito, Greg? Not so good right now. Getting worked over good by Arn Anderson here. I'm hoping he can uh, make the tag to Martel, but he's not into it. Oh, that Tito. Sleeping. You can see him right there. See his little face right there around the corner? That's him. Okay, here we go. Chico's trying to get to the... Uh, to the corner. Look at this guy. What a little bitch. Yeah. I love Rick Martel, but this is one of his most unlikable moments. Boy, it's really tough for me to decide who I like better as an overall career between Tito and Martel, but I'm going to give the nod to Tito. Look, he's leaving now. This is ridiculous. I'm going to go be a model. I'm going to get a big giant button that goes on my shirt that says, yes, I am a model. That way nobody can mistake me for anything but a model. I'm going to buy a fleet of tanning beds to keep in my garage. Or garage. Yeah, now it's the Bustas. I wish their names would have been Brain Bustas, like, with a Z. Okay, thanks, We Are Pro Wrestling. The only other match they were together in was the 89 Rumble. Yeah, other than that, this is it. It's crazy how some guys, you know, oh, big, big spine buster. For as long careers as they have, there's just a couple of, there's a lot of instances where a couple of guys just don't cross paths ever. Never in the same place in the same time. Look at Tully. I hate way, the way he did that little prance. <laughs> Big monkey. Oh, missed. I like that Tito's trying to get the win. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, my God. That's incredible. That should be a finisher. And Tito took that better than anyone ever could. The Bustas. Yeah, Mean Gene. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Tito. That's right. I forgot Martel did come back originally from his injury as singles. And there you go. Your post WrestleMania house show tour would be, be Tito Martel, Tito Martel, Tito Martel. Yeah, I agree with Gorilla on this one. You settle them outside the ring, not inside. Yeah, but Gorilla, remember 
or something, laws are made to be broken. That's another Jesse Robert yeah. story. I'm here to hear that. Obviously, yeah, you better remember that later there, Jesse. Mr. All of a sudden, you want to play by the rules? Are you okay with the rules being broken? Just walking out on Tito. No more girls in cars. That was the end of girls in cars. I never thought about that, Daniel Clark. It took me 35 years. Hey, it's you again. It took me 35 years to realize that that was the end of girls in cars. Rest in peace. Nearly 35 years. We've been without girls in cars. It's sad, man. All right, what ridiculous... Mo- oh, it's Piper's Pit. Sweet. This one was weird. I didn't know who Morton Downey Jr. was. I did not watch his TV show. I don't even know if it came on where I lived. I never saw it come on. Never came across it while channel surfing. Oh, Piper's first. <laughs> I don't think he is. <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of this segment either, to be honest, because I wanted Piper to beat the shit out of Morton Downey, and he didn't. Fucking Bruce. This is my favorite Piper theme. (laughs) Take a look at those legs. (laughs) Oh, my God. I mean, they kind of, the way I remember them kind of setting this up, or Piper might mention it here, like, Brother Love, like, kind of took over the Piper's Pit spot, but he didn't really. You know, Piper's Pit was gone, but they still had... Didn't they have something else? Maybe that. Maybe not. Maybe I guess it was Brother Love Show took over as the top wrestling talk show, but the Snake Pit was around still. That was going on. But yeah, I guess it was Brother Love, now that I think about it. And then after Brother Love was Funeral Parlor. And that's where they set up a lot of their angles. God, he's that red face of his. (laughs) Brother Rodney. Oh, yeah, he does like an impression. He's not playing with a full deck. Look. <laughs> a lot of energy there. There's a lot of plaid going on. I definitely remember 
watching this live and 90% of it frustrated me. This shit was annoying as hell. And then you get the other jack off out there with his fucking cigarette. And then Piper, for some reason, isn't sticking his foot up both her asses. He basically gave him too much offense. <laughs> this should have been a squash. He must have done this in the back. And then Vince, ah, that's great. It's not great. Yeah, I James though, you know, I wanted more. I wanted him to just, I didn't feel like the punishment was enough, like the fire extinguisher in the face. Okay, I was like, what the hell song is that? I was like, if, if this is Piper's dub music, I'm gonna lose my shit, but it's not. This must be the I can't even hear Fink, so this feels like a network edit here. Oh, and he's running down, slapping hands. I could kick this guy's ass. Why is he being such a tough guy? Just wring his fucking neck. Little piece of shit. <laughs> weird reference. If you want, if you want weird, completely random references, you're at the right channel. Have you ever seen the movie The Fugitive with Harrison Ford? At the very end, when he finally gets the guy that kills his wife in the subway, and they fight, and he finally gets him down, and he kind of handcuffs him to the railing so the cops can come get him, all he does is like kind of take his head and smack it in the back to like knock him out. I would like dismember the motherfucker. I would have done like severe damage to him. And he let him off easy. And I'm like, what the fuck? He killed your wife brutally. I'd still be whooping his ass. And so Piper should have pile dro driven this dickwad on the steel steps. Yeah, they both talk. So he's got that big ashtray. Finally. And people just puff chain smoking like that. It's just crazy. Like, you can't not puff on it for two fucking seconds. All right, is this actually him? There he is. I mean, he's getting a nice ovation here, but I feel like a lot of that killed the fans' mood in this. Like, they seemed pretty jacked when his music started playing with Brother Love came out. They should have... They executed this poorly. He's got that hair. It was crazy seeing with that hair. He looks like the... Uh, He's got the hairstyle of a what's like the the nice uh, kind of metal rocker high school kid in Stranger Things that dies. He's like a Dungeons and Dragons guy, cool guy, like Dustin's friend. It looks like him. Look at this! Look at this Morton Downey slob. Pull his skirt off. Betty Davis knees. Julia Morton Downey Jr. died of lung cancer on March 12, 2001. Wow, almost uh, the anniversary of that. 
I wonder why. I wonder what caused it. You must have ate a lot of bacon. The Oprah Winfrey diet? Brother love. Oh, he's got a cigarette in his hair. This fucker is throwing cigarettes. I've never really gone and watched this back many times because I fucking hate it, and I'm starting to remember why I hate it. I'm like, oh yeah, I hate this. Talking to the winos. <laughs> I'm a lover with really white ear holes. <laughs> oh, gifts from the million dollar man. I always heard that, but I don't know why. Like, I always heard that, like, if you're wearing fake gold, it makes your fingers green. Like, that's what they try to say. But I don't know anything about that. Yeah, no one. This show, man. I want to go if I could teleport into one moment in time I would teleport into this ring and Spanish fly Morton Downey Jr. stupid fucking face through the ring bell or no not Spanish fly what's the one where you reverse Rana him <laughs> That one. <laughs> oh, look out. Yeah, what a great insult, Roddy. He basically says he's got no genitals. You're just a Ken doll under there. Cute little Bruce knees. I'm going to give it a pass. It was 19. Oh, see, he even tripped on the step. Okay, that took a lot of time. One down and one to go.
Uh oh, Nicole Lensing. <clears throat> Shout out to Nicole. Making it rain with the channel memberships. Looks like she's hooking up. OTS Tribal Queen, Ben Espinoza, Randy Troutman, five star. Ray Durazo, right on. Thank you for that. You are the best. No, this one, uh, OTS, this one was from Nicole. Juliet also likes to do this, but this one uh, was from, De from Nicole. And she hooked a lot of people up. That is awesome. That was the best distraction away from this nonsense that you could get. I would be, I would not let somebody blow smoke in my face like that. Nope. Nope. That's the name your mama wanted to call me from the husband who reared me. <clears throat> well, he'd already be dead. Like, Piper's one of the most ruthless guys. And he's just taking this. Mr. Downey. You spell all these nasty warts all over your face. He did? Big nasty green ones. Big nasty green ones. The guy who ran back, I used to walk the loo with her six feet up. What happened to the warts? I gave them to a homeless war dog. I didn't know your girlfriend was homeless. What are you going to do about it, Downey? Oh, oh my God. I don't understand how Piper let him do this. Mr. Piper, don't blow no more smoke in my face. I want to ask you, now, I'm not wearing a skirt, so that word doesn't go with me. Call the tilt, Mr. Downey. Call the tilt <laughs> with me. Listen, L-E-D. Sorry, folks, for you who didn't get it, that was K-I-L-L-E-D as in killed. <laughs> You're a real knee slapper, you are, Bubba. Uh, you got this thing you call zip it. Why aren't you just whipping his ass? Simple. Zip it doesn't mean whip it. Doesn't mean flip it. It means zip it. Zip it? Fuck you. Off is the direction you can fuck Morton Downey Jr. I like your brother Robert better. Yes, brothers can both be juniors. Long hair, skirt, same thing. Later on, he got picked up in a bar as a transvestite. <laughs> I want to ask you one more time. Uh, please don't blow the smoke to my face. Uh, you know, I'm talking to a guy. Now, this is a guy that's... Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, I'm gonna say this to you again. Don't blow no more smoke in my face. You understand that? Cut, 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 cut. Like, that good? That's good. That's good. That's good for you. That's healthy. It's good for you. It's healthy. You know, it's Bitch, you're gonna be dwell dead in twelve years. Goat's flavor.
And that's it. Just the fire extinguisher. All that build. 20 minutes of bullshit. For them just to extinguish this fool's face. Got him. Fire extinguisher up the butt. Can you at least hit him on the head with it? Can you at least crack his fucking head open with the... Extinguisher? And then he leaves. I would have kicked his ass, too. I would have put him in a sleeper hold. The legend is he didn't know about the fire stinger. He seemed to know. He knew his cue. He knew when to turn around and all that. Like, what was he What was he expecting to happen when he turned around with the cigarette piper to take it and smoke it? No, he knew. And there he is. Unless he was expecting Piper just to punch him or something. Well, welcome back, Piper, but your return sucked. So did Snookas. All right, Piper is back. That's true. Piper probably did want to flex his improv muscles a little bit in a segment like this, because even if you have somewhat of a script, you're not going to follow it perfectly, so. Right in the kisser. And in the ass. And up his ass. I have never in my life deployed a fire extinguisher. I don't even know how to do it. I have one in the house. I have them all over at work. I think they're pretty easy. In a pinch, I think I could figure one out. But I've never used one, ever. Make it stop. Make it stop. Stop it. Get him off. Uh, uh, no, he never wins. He's a fucking loser. Loser to his shit-filled core bones. Uh, whew, that was hard. I was freaking out there for a minute. Okay, moving on. Yeah, Mike Witt, I'm also just here for the rooster match. Oh, yeah. Jesse is mad because on the live pay-per-view feed and probably the VHS, they played a trailer for No Holds Barred. That was the announcement of the movie. And it pissed off Jesse for invading his Hollywood territory. But yeah, they showed a whole No Holds Barred uh, trailer on that pay-per-view. I went to see No Holds Barred in the theater, which means I paid to see it. I gave money, my money, to someone else in exchange for watching the movie. And I'm pretty sure it was $3.25. And I'd like that back. I mean, I could get I could get like a Mountain Dew Baja Blast with that or the Slim Jim, you know, medium-sized could put that money to good use if I could have it back, but no, I had to spend it on No Holds Barred. Fucking bullshit. Oh, man, we're going to get a recap package of the Mega Powers, even though we're like an hour at least away from that match starting.
That was a great, great childhood memory for me. I remember re the night of WrestleMania 4 so fucking vividly. Definitely the hottest Elizabeth ever was. Uh oh, my, my peacock stalled, but I think we're good. I'm still all right. Now the show in the SummerSlam match. I felt like I had a jump there or something, but my timer is right. Yeah, I'm like one second off, but. Oh, there's him grabbing Elizabeth. They were planting the seeds so early for that, too. I remember that night, too. Survivor Series 88. I watched that on pay-per-view. And Hogan lost the previous year's Survivor Series. Andre won. Look how big Boss Man was back then. <laughs> look, how, look how big Boss Man was. Look how big the big Boss Man was. Here comes Hogan in there right away. Damn, he muscled him up on that one, too. Hmm. That was that was such a crazy bump that she took. Look at her head. Prop her head up, Hogan. Jesus, she's just... Uh. Slapped him. I can't believe Elizabeth didn't get legit injured on that bump. The token Hogan WrestleMania promo, and the earth is going to open up, and I'm going to doggy paddle to safety or something like that. Ugh. He had lust in his eyes. That he did. Okay, good. I'm glad my screen wasn't the only one that blacked out. And then they cut out Hogan's No Holds Barred trailer. It's just really the most superb acting you can find. I don't know why Hogan didn't get nominated for an Oscar. Hmm. You know what, Chad? I, I'm not. I did not know Jesse's in the beginning of the movie. I haven't seen it in forever. I guess I forgot that. I must have forgotten that. That's really funny and ironic. I like that. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll do a review of it, but that means I have to watch it and make notes on it, then do a recording of it, then edit it. That's a lot of work for No Holds Barred. I already spent three bucks on it. Oh, these two. But what really tore us apart was the way he was so jealous of Hulkamania. 
You're not a believer in the demandments. Hogan's <laughs> always just so roided out. <laughs> wow, 30, yeah, for 35th anniversary of the movie, that's true. Axe was in it, I think I knew that. I want to watch it again just to see the people I'd recognize. That I don't remember the last time. I've watched some clips, but... I probably only seen the whole movie that one time. And I'm like, yeah, here we go. The earth opened up again. Don't worry, I got him. Hogan was a promo, wasn't he? What you gonna do? He looks ready to me. Mike Witt, thanks for the five. I think I've come across that rumor too. You heard a rumor that after Mania 1, Vince wanted Snooker to turn on Hogan, setting up a Mania 2 main event. Hogan nixed it for Bundy instead. The Bundy cage match was memorable, but... Oh, yeah, this is the Jake and Andre match. But, uh... Oh, could you imagine Snooker doing the cage dive onto a bloody Hogan? Oh, my God, that would be tremendous. That would have been awesome. So this uh, theme that Big John Studd is coming out to would be repurposed as Hacksaw Jim Duggan's theme after Studd would leave. And I don't recall when Studd's last appearance was, but I feel like this is it. And I don't know why he left. I don't know why he was there so briefly, especially when it looked like they were going to use him. Yep, Stan Hansen's in it. That I knew. I remember that scene. He's unmistakable. I even knew who he was back then when I saw him in the movie. Not exactly your typical referee. You can say that again. Coming down the aisle with his manager, Bobby the Great Heenan. Here comes Andre. And it was interesting, too, how Andre was kind of back with Bobby Heenan now. Bobby Heenan, or Andre spent such a big part of 1988 with DiBiase. And now they're back together. <clears throat> yeah, I want to know like how the house show matches went in 89 between these two. I can't imagine Stud just plain beating him, but he might have. I feel like anything has just got to be DQs and shit. Although Andre was doing jobs to Warrior and shit, so I guess Stud would have been no different. Look at Studs like, fuck you, man. I mean, all these guys, I mean, it's so crazy because Andre or Bobby was with Stud at WrestleMania 1 in the slam match, the $25,000 or $15,000 slam match, whatever it was. It's funny how he's now managing the other dude. That's some Lesnar and Roman shit right there. Hey, look at that. See Andre there? See him? Fucking with that... 
turnbuckle pad. Yeah. It's doing a quick catch up. There we go. Nice. I was off by like two seconds on the peacock timer, and this timer is driving me crazy, so I got it right. There we go. And see? Boom. Andre's super smart because he knows that Stud's an idiot and not a normal referee. He could probably get away with something like that. And he was messing with it when Jake was making his entrance. You could see it on the wide camera shot. That was good stuff. That's why Andre's the best. Funk and Roadhouse is the best wrestler in a movie? Really? Maybe. I've only seen the clip of Funk and Roadhouse. I've never seen Roadhouse. But you might be right, Mike. Appreciate two more. Hmm. Ooh. Going for the sack. Just to get his sack out. That's all he wants to do. I don't know how, but they did it. Uh, Gorilla, they untied it and removed it. <laughs> Gorilla's like, I don't know how they got that turnbuckle pad off. Andre had a feud like this too, kind of with uh, with Duggan. Like Duggan, he was like choking out Duggan. Duggan was like bleeding and everything, and then he picks up the two by four and just knocks Andre out unconscious. And then I think after that is when Jake gives Andre a fucking heart attack with the snake. <laughs> Andre is probably like 40 here. I think he died at like 42 or 43. He might be 30. He might, he might be 38 or 39 at this point, Andre. It's just crazy. Of all the people to tell Andre the Giant drinking story, Kane? Oh, Jake. <laughs> well, Andre supposedly drank 100 beers at one time. His drinking is the stuff of legend. Hmm. Yeah, Bobby has had a busy night. He still has to wrestle, and we've got Warrior and Rude. Look at Jake. With some offense on Andre. Up oh, there he goes, Andre, with his classic Andre spot. Yeah, this sucks. Andre, not even your 64 teeth can save you. Oh, my God. Look at him choking Andre. Yeah, get the snake. Oh, he was a little older than I thought. Okay. Okay. 
Ow. Yeah, Andre's got that hard head. Oh, Andre got free. <laughs> I like when Jesse thinks Gorilla plays favorites. You're so biased. No. Oh, he said you're getting worse than McMahon. And to kiss her. Is that is that okay to be doing a snake? Just wrap them up in a bag? I'm claustrophobic as hell. If somebody put me in a bag, I would lose my shit in there. My biggest like nightmare come to life. Oh, just to be like head first inside a sleeping bag, and then somebody like blocks the exit, and you're just in there. Can't do it. You are right, buddy? Tito. He's coughing. He licks like hair and dust off the floor. Does anybody else's cats do this shit? It's really weird. And he's gotten himself sick a couple times. He's an idiot. He's well fed, but for some reason, like if he if I'm petting him or combing him or something, there's a bunch of hair, he will eat it. And I don't boy ain't right. I like Jake's uh, tights. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were first for uh, being serious, Mike. I'm like, well, maybe if I go back and watch it, I'll appreciate it more. Oh. And now Andre ate it. But you could probably make a case for that movie before Rock, Batista, and Cena started getting involved. Look at Andre. Ugh, God, he just struggles to get up. Not letting Jake back in. <laughs> like, why doesn't Bobby just run over there and grab the bag and run away with it? <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> I was, I thought the same thing. I was like, the bag's just right there. He and Bo and Andre's in control. Why can't Bobby just run and snag it and run off? Just like he snagged the bag of money in the, in the slam match at WrestleMania 1. I mean, Andre is still so much bigger than Stud. See Andre and Stud versus Kane and Undertaker. That would be fun. There we go. He's got it. Nope, Stud's not letting him. Oh, Andre hit him. <laughs> Andre got shoved by Stud. And yeah, and here's Million Dollar Man out of nowhere, which was weird. I mean, DiBiase and Jake would face at the next year's WrestleMania, and DiBiase, who... Seemed like him and Andre had parted back ways again. Now gets involved. And now Andre grabs Stud. They got the split screen, which I love. And Andre's going to town on Big John Stud. And oh, and Jake, Jake retrieved the snake. 
and save stud. And Jake's gonna win via DQ. Why is Andre disqualified? Because he beat up John Studd. No, you're both wrong. No, Jesse, see, here's, a, here's an argument where you're wrong. He got disqualified because he hit the referee. Big John Studd was blocking Jake from losing, or from bringing Damien in. And then Andre attacked him. That's why he's disqualified. Both of you are idiots. Jesse, especially you in this case. Up in the cheap seats. It's not even that bad of a view. Bob Euchre seats. <laughs> Jake's the best. What does his shirt say? He just likes Jake. He's probably drunk. Oh, look at this. Tony and Sherry. Look at Sherry. Sensational. That's funny. Look at her with the choker. Yeah. Oh my God. It's vicious. You could tell. I even knew. I'm like, oh, they're going to put Sherry with Macho Man. Love that. All right. Here is uh, one of uh, Bret Hart's many WrestleMania victories coming up here. Yeah, they actually set that up. There would be a... It's probably on the uh, Coliseum video release. There's like a post-show interview with Elizabeth where she's talking about the match and everything and then Savage comes in and gets in her face and or Sherry comes in and Savage and everybody gets involved. Hogan even comes in as a part of this and they kind of set it up right there. And then at WrestleMania 7, they did something similar. Like after the show, they filmed something in the locker room where Sergeant Slaughter like threw a fireball in Hogan's face. So they did a couple of those. I don't remember one after WrestleMania 6, but those two, they definitely did. And here comes the Hart Foundation. Watch Brett. See if he trips over the thing. Huh, see? Tripped. I'm trying to think where WrestleMania 5 would be. I think I see it. It's not in bad shape. I got a good, I got a really solid copy of this. It's in a plastic thing, but solid. WrestleMania 5, Mega Powers Explode. Wow, check out. It's got the match listing on the back. That's crazy. That's a lot of matches. A lot of matches. This says this is a three-hour spectacular. So they edit this down? Usually the runtime is on the tape. And this is pre-rhythm and blues. So they're just kind of sticking these guys together, hammer and honk, without really... Uh, 
giving them the team name. Oh, it says approximately three hours. That's all. A good old Coliseum video. Yeah, I didn't realize how pristine mine is. I have a pretty pretty good copy of this. It's in pretty good shape for something that's 35 years old. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Honky and Hitman used to kind of be homies. Yeah, hearts are just way crisper. I mean, that's a pretty solid team. I mean, at the time, both men, Honky and Hammer, were more accomplished than the Hearts. I mean, they were both former Intercontinental Champions. And Honky had the longest run. Coke bottle glasses. Yeah, well, yeah, we are pro wrestling. Why wasn't this Hearts and Rougeau's and then Honky and Hammer against the Bushies? That's what they should have done. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, at one time, Honky and Hearts were champions together in Jimmy Hart's stable. That was when Valentine was still with uh, Luscious Johnny. Sparta. Yeah, that's Freddy Sparta. <laughs> yeah, we know the referees, Jesse. It's not uncommon to know them. Mike Whip, appreciate the five bucks. What's the oldest video in my collection? Mine is our 86 Starcade Night Skywalkers. I already have I also have some recorded VCR of AWA shows back in 87. I don't know. Probably 85 or 84 is my oldest tape, but I don't know what it would be. Pat Patterson. Something like this, I would assume, would might be one of my oldest, Andre the Giant. I don't know what the release on this thing was. I'd guess this is an 83, perhaps 84 release. Oh, wow, that's weird. Sticker came off. Yeah, it doesn't say, doesn't have the year anywhere. Oh, and he hit Brett with the shake. Yeah, that was your finisher, and he didn't pin Bret Hart. Oh, Valentine's doing his shin guard thing. Yeah, good counter by Brett. Hearts had now been baby faces for a year, you know, since the previous WrestleMania. And it would take them another year to get back to the, uh, to even challenge for the titles. They had a little, they split them apart briefly in 89, just for a little while. You never had no hold.
<laughs> I love Jesse giving Gorilla shit for his age. Why don't you help him, Anvil? Goddamn, Jimmy's so obnoxious. Smart by... Oh, wow. Even smarter by Brett. Wow. Standing dropkick from Anvil. Oh. Oh, the inner the IC titles up next. Oh. I don't know if I have Night of the Skywalkers. I always forget some of those. I gotta look. I might. I got a couple of Starcades from the 80s. One of them's rare. I just don't remember which one. Big slam. Yeah, nailed him. Oh, look. There's the megaphone. Oh, love it. So slick. Boom. And then Brett just casually gets on top. I love this kind of two years in a row that babyface hearts cheat. Because the next year, Anvil gets pissed during the Russian National Anthem and just attacks the Bolsheviks before the bell. And then hearts beat him and, like, squash him in ten seconds. <coughs> Big win for the Heart Foundation. It'd be like another like 17 months until they would win the tag team titles. There's Brett grabbed it. Boom. Right on the shoulder. I'll just have like Brett just tosses it right out of the ring. So slick. That's why I loved Brett. All my ECW tapes are like uh, recorded tapes. I don't have any like commercial tapes of ECW. Oh, pose down footage. Also, something like this. This one, again, no. No, this one's probably not that old. It's probably just not as old as Andre, but I have these best of. I got a few of these. This is volume five. I got like 19 of them. The pose down. Nothing like a good old pose down. Look at... That's Nick Bockwinkle. Oh, Nick Bockwinkle took a chop from the Warrior. I don't I don't think I've ever realized that that was him before. That's hysterical. Look at Bockwinkle. Selling. Come on, get him. Oh. Bob Bockwinkle with a bump on the outside. That's great. How long was he in WWE 4 as an agent? I know he was in WCW for a while, but I didn't, didn't even remember that he was came through WWE. That was definitely him. Mike Wade, did you see that? Oh, God, they're doing it again. Oh, my God, this song. We have heard this now as a group several times. And it's ass. It's total ass. Total and complete ass. (laughs) 
Smitty, no, The Rock is not the one picking the Hall of Fame entries. He has input. He's a part of the process, I think, is all that report was. But he does have a role in it, for sure. Yeah, this music can suck my ass. God, so horrible. Uh, it's better than Def Rebel. Yeah, I might agree with that. Look at her. The hair during that time was something else. <clears throat> oh, look at her. She wants to see it. Hit the music. I just do not understand why they have to dub this at all. God, Rick Root. Look at his fucking hair. And he's already got the IC on his trunks. Yeah, there's your six-pack right there. Hip swivel. Oh, screen went black again. Huh. God, Warrior going down these stairs. I cannot believe he did not fall. This could have been shock master level <laughs> career killing right there if Warrior would have eaten shit on the uh, entrance ramp. <laughs> Jesus. This guy's a lunatic. Yeah, he is. Ah, warrior, a rude need the belt. Oof, rude sold his ass off here in this match. Rude's got them Brian Pillman legs. <laughs> Pillman had skinny ass chicken legs too. <laughs> oh. It is kind of weird too like when you think about setting this match up Brood not only beat him down in the pose down at the Rumble, but then he also beats him for the title. Usually the, the math goes the other way. Like Warrior would have the moment at the Rumble and then Rude would beat him for the title or something like that. I don't think Warrior's ever fallen. If he did, I would definitely know about it and probably have watched it a million times. So I don't think he's ever fallen completely down. Yeah, it did take Bobby Heenan a long time to win gold in the WWE despite managing main event talent. His guys had a lot of title shots. John Studd, Bundy, and Orndorff, and Andre. I mean, there's a lot of guys in Heenan Stable that gave Hogan a run for their money. But never found gold until finally here. Poked him right in the eye. Wow. What a missile dropkick. And he kicked out a negative one. And he's up. No selling. What a piece of shit. God. Yeah, he bounced off that mat. Oh, he's going up again. 
I mean, that's kind of... I mean, I like watching a match where a body slam is actually an effective move. And means something, because Rude's got the uh, injured back, so Warrior just keeps picking up and slamming him down on it. Simple, yet effective. Rooster matches right after that. If my if this, if my memory serves, as I know Bobby gets probably the worst gorilla press slam you've ever seen. Ah, look at Morella stopping him. Of course, Jesse's mad about it. <laughs> well, he certainly did it. <laughs> I loved Roosters, or I'm sorry, uh, Rude's tights. He always had... My favorite was the Cheryl Roberts stuff. That was good. Rude is just taking a fucking ass kick in here. Oh, he's way off. He's way off the mark. <laughs> I swear I don't have this commentary memorized, but I've said like three things right before Gorilla and Jesse said it. Hmm. Yeah, pile driver, dude. I was like, what's all that shit on Rude? But I think it's Warrior's face paint. Ooh, jawbreaker. Oh. Couldn't swivel, those hips. Couldn't swivel those hips. Rude looks so funk funky in those in that gear. Sucks Rude only had that short run with the title. I thought he was a far superior champion than Honky Tonk Man ever was. And he only held the title for a couple of months. Wow, Russian side Russian leg sweep. <laughs> look at this. Where's the big muscles now? I'm like, they're right there, dude. See all them veins? He's a he's vascular, isn't he? Oh, do some warrior paint next time I have to work? That would be interesting. Oh, no. Here goes. Rude's going to get mangled some more here. <laughs> well, that's what he's doing, Jesse. So just chill. <laughs> Oof. Oh god, that was a horrible botch. The warrior couldn't hold him up or something. 
Oh. Man, throwing him around. Oh. Oh. Uh oh, rude awakening attempt. I don't know. I don't think rude hits it. Warrior, instead of kicking out of it, he just power out, powered out of it. I probably like that better. Hmm. Well, I think, you know, Warrior working with Rude was great because Rude, I remember this match and the cage match they had at SummerSlam really fondly. I think Rude did a really good job making the Warrior look good. These matches were very memorable. Even their SummerSlam 89 match, they had that, there's that trio on pay-per-view of these three, and I like all three of the matches. I was so mad, though, as a kid watching this. I did predict this match right, too. Ooh, there it is. I called it, Monsoon. It's like Warrior kind of is like, he didn't even care. Like, he does care, but he's just stalking Heenan. Look at this press slam is so bad. This looks like shit. And then Warrior still gets his music played. Oh, I lost the title. <laughs> Rude's running. And Bobby got stuck. Look at this fucker. Cinching it down. It is crazy that Bobby Heenan has two WrestleMania matches. Back to back years. What's this match? Oh, I forgot about this one. It's Hacksaw, right? I thought there was no more matches. I thought he was up next against... Uh... What the fuck is this? Yeah, Duggan. Huh. <laughs> I was thinking it was went straight. I forgot about this match completely. Look at how happy he looks. I forgot about this one. <laughs> it is funny that Hacksaw's here considering uh, Stud was using his music earlier on. With old glory. If anybody hasn't smashed that thumbs up button for me, now might be a good time to do that. I'd appreciate it. Savor the moment. Savor the 
He is due up next. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is also a DQ, and I think the following year, it was uh, like a double countout with uh, Piper. So I feel like Bad News it had three WrestleMania appearances, and he won the Battle Royal. Okay, I was thinking he never had a finish, but I guess he did win that Battle Royal. So, And then two kind of countouts and DQs after that. <laughs> Duggan's just hoeing out there. <laughs> You're not going to scramble those brains. They're already scrambled. Well, this is one hell of a buffer match right here. My God. I guess uh, since we still have the main event, I'll go grab one more cold one. Be right back. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what kind of match do you think you'd get out of these two guys? And I don't recall how this one was set up on TV either. If it was at all, it might not have been. Down he goes. Can't imagine this match goes any more than another minute or two. Let's uh, wrap it up here, fellers. Oh, the Ghetto Blaster. I forgot. Oh, I like the running start. Oh, but he missed. Boom. Caught him. And out goes bad news. I'm really glad that Hacksaw isn't painted half black in this match. <laughs> Bad News has a chair. <laughs> Here we go. Now it's a weapons match. Chair versus two by four. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yes. Fencing. Ow. Jesus. Mm. <laughs> what a pointless match there's been a few of those on this pay-per-view five more from mike i'm saying jimmy solo go heel on roman night after mania raw with a new member of bloodline debuting setting up roman's babyface turn in the process something like that is possible i'm hoping for a big angle to drop on the raw after mania Th they should do that ew snot It's not gross. Thought it was something pleasant, but it's not. Oh, it's Rooster and Heenan up next. I don't know why this wasn't the main event. Oh my god. Arr, arr, arr. This gimmick. Mm. 
Did he travel with that red shit in his hair? Or? The Red Rooster. <laughs> Even when I was 11, I knew this was fucking idiotic. It's going to be a great day in the barnyard. What the hell? Cody bringing back the winged eagle. I don't know what the chances are. Probably not good. Oh, there's the brawler. I'm surprised it wasn't brawler and uh, rooster. The Brooklyn brawler. He sucked. You suck, Steve Lombardi. Bobby's got that Andre singlet on. Here he comes. He's got music. The Red Rooster. That's me. I mean, it's so dumb, like, the Red Rooster. Those early days of, like, Bruce's podcast and stuff, he would defend this shit till the end of the earth about this not being the dumbest gimmick in the history of everything. And he's like, no, he's the cock of the walk or whatever. I'm like, that's stupid. It's fucking stupid. Even for 1989 standards, it's stupid. Or 88 when he came in. Bobby's covering up. Oof. Yep. That's exactly what it's all about. Oh, Heenan posted himself. And that's it. <laughs> and there, and he got clobbered from behind by the brawler. Fucking squash match at WrestleMania. That's up there with some of the quickest. Hmm. He got a title and he got his match over with and he survived it I'm trying to get into Rooster's theme but I just can't it sucks like everything else about the gimmick I just said I'm giving him credit <laughs> Hooks poor Bobby. Man, what a shot from behind, too. Fucking Freddy Sparta doing nothing about it. All right, it is time for the explosion of the Mega Powers. Finally, three hours and eight minutes in. Finally, time. Miss Elizabeth. Check out them Madonna Material Girl gloves there. The most difficult time of your entire life. Unquestionably, Jean. Today I love Elizabeth. And from there, I will continue to support both men. You support both of them, even though Randy Savage is treating you like shit? It's unfortunate for everyone that these two men feel they have to resolve their differences 
in this way. I can only hope for one thing, Jim. <laughs> I can only pray for one thing, and that's that neither man will be seriously injured. Okay, fair enough, Elizabeth. Hot dress, by the way. Shivani, young Shivani, such a stiff. All the wrestlers have vacated. They're all in the arena. He said, "What they at ringside?" That wasn't that much of a split decision. You didn't even get him a chance to answer. Here comes Macho Man, I thought. I love it. I always loved it when they would change the champion comes out last unwritten rule when it was like Hogan or a baby face or something. That's just like an unbelievable amount of security. Probably personally requested by Macho Man. I don't want any of those fucking assholes putting one finger on my delicious body. That's right. I want 14 yellow shirts at least around me when I go to the ring. You understand that? Dig it? That belt looks so good on him, though. He's my number two behind Brett. You are a great champion. It's a year-long run for him. The luster. And this is also kind of the end of headband and glasses Macho Man, because shortly after this, he would become the king and then he'd be Macho King. And then when he was no longer Macho King and he was Macho Man, he had transitioned into the cowboy hat and the glasses. So this is kind of the end of the uh, the headband. And it sucks. This is my favorite macho. Headband and glasses macho is my favorite macho. Now we have to have this listen to the song again. Second time in a row. For Miss Elizabeth. What a gold digger. Look at Pat. Look at Patterson with his arms. Well, Elizabeth, you're definitely safe there. That's for sure. I mean, what is with the shielding? This has got to be... Is this Macho Man because he's fucking crazy? Look at the people. Like, what's the story behind this? I feel like this is savage. Like, shield my wife. Nobody can touch her. Nobody. She looks annoyed. Like, goddamn. Hmm. Giving shit to Elizabeth. You know, at that time, Macho Man could definitely make a case. Others could too, but he's he's in the conversation of the most talented in the business at the time in '89. Yeah. Oh, Juliet, I like that idea. Could do that. Here comes Hogan, about to win his belt back. (laughs) 
He had that short hair, that old Dutch boy haircut or whatever. <laughs> it just looked weird on him. He's usually just like a little longer. Oh, well, Hogan's got the security too, so I guess this is, this is not a Macho Man thing. This is WWE not trusting a New Jersey audience, and I don't blame them. Go after your best friend's woman. The doctored footage. When I was a kid, I could not I did not understand what doctored footage was. And I was like, are they trying to say it's fake? Is that what they're trying to say? Like it's fake doctored footage? Now it's very easy to doctor footage. <laughs> It's about as easy as it's, as it's ever been to do that. <laughs> I remember when he came out during this time, my dad said, look, it's ho Hoak. That's who he is. Who's who hook close enough. The pukesters. Listen to the pukesters. The immortal slime. And the ultimate puke. I do love this match. Like, I like it on paper. Hogan, Savage. Prime of their careers. Main event of WrestleMania. It was predictable as all hell. I remember my mom was not that big of a wrestling fan. I don't think she ever quite got it. My dad was a little more open to it. But I remember prior to WrestleMania, probably all the way back, right? it was right after uh, Savage turned. There was like a write-up and maybe like the TV guide or something about it. And my mom was like, mm-hmm. And then she shows it to me. And it was just this little paragraph saying what to expect at WrestleMania this year. It's going to be Hulk Hogan winning his title back, beating Randy Savage. But that was kind of obvious. My mom was trying to see, like, see, it's fake or whatever. I'm like, well, obviously, even at 11 years old, I knew that Hogan was going to win the title back. There was no way Savage is going to retain the title in this situation. Just no way. But they still made it a good match. Savage said some sort of a medical issue in his elbow right there. You can see it taped up. And I remember I thought he said it was something steroid related, but I'm not totally sure. But something was going on with his elbow there. Savage down again. It ain't over till it's over. It's barely started yet. She deserves it. He did? Not from her. <laughs> yeah, classy Freddie Blassie. It was a staff infection. Might have been the same. Didn't it Austin have that? That like King of the Ring match with Kane and whatnot? Oh. Oh, 
Oh my god. Jesse is basically saying it's fine if she gets punched in the face because she has it coming. <laughs> what an asshole. Wow. Oh, missed. Boom. Savage could I love the way Savage like sold Hogan's punches and shoulder tackles and stuff. He definitely put over the Hogan's power. <laughs> I love that Gorilla and Jesse both lose arguments to each other, but I love it when Jesse is right, but he still loses the argument. I had a staph infection too last year. Everybody who worked for me, my entire staff, all of them got this like weird rash. Fucking no staph infection. I was the only one who didn't get it. Like, where are y'all getting this rash? <laughs> That's cheating. It's skill. I used to have those type of arguments like, we played a lot of outdoor basketball in my neighborhood with all my friends and stuff. And you make some crazy shot. And you're like, that's, that's lucky. It's skill. It's skill. Yeah. We would always say that total skill. He's the chumpster. He's the pukester. He's the immortal slime. He's got a lot of nicknames. Going for the hair. Hogan, not having it. Nice. <laughs> oh my God, Jesse. So butthurt. He grabbed the trunks. <laughs> Taking it to the floor. Oh my God, he's obnoxious. Hogan looks like he's already busted open in there already. I didn't realize where he got busted open. Those early, those early WrestleManias. Wow, Hogan is bleeding. That might have been accidental. I didn't see where Hogan... I mean, that feels like a blade job due to its location, but I didn't see where he did it. Unless it was, oh, it might have been on the outside. Did he get posted on the outside? That might have been when it was. I don't get really too cranky about 
who goes into the Hall of Fame before other people, but I th- I do think I would be upset if Luger went in before Elizabeth. I feel like this year would be a great year for Elizabeth. You need a woman. Vince is gone. Triple H is there now, and Rock. I just can't see them not thinking she wouldn't be worthy. You know, I'm gonna make that prediction. I'm going to make that prediction. I think Elizabeth's going to go in this year. I could be wrong, but based on the the reports that we've heard about The Rock and everything in the Hall of Fame, I feel like this might be the year. I think. Maybe. Maybe. I'm hoping for Elizabeth this year. We'll see. We'll see. Oh. Is he oh I thought he was going for the leg drop. Nope, elbow. Nice. Rolls him up. No, not at all. <laughs> Girl is like, sure. <laughs> He's the only one. Jesse only calls it down the middle. Please. Hogan loved to do the, the cling to the boot spot. It was like one of his trademarks. He did it to all the heels. Oh. Oh, I forgot about Bull Nakano. I forgot about her. Never mind. Maybe it isn't Elizabeth's year. I was thinking we hadn't had a woman yet, but we do. Bull Nakano. Yep, that might be it. Might be uh, 41. Minneapolis might be Elizabeth's uh, induction. It's going to happen soon, though. They'll get her in. I'm confident. Of the chump. Of the champ. Yep, Hogan's up. Oh, yeah, Shamrock? Hell, yeah. Rock would be into that for sure. So would Triple H. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, this is so great. Just body slamming right over the top rope. I love that. Just such a rando move for Hogan. He's like, you know, I'm I'm a power. I'm a body slam this bitch right outside the ring. (laughs) Just pick him up, throw him right over. Elizabeth's trying to help him out. Ooh. God, he almost. He almost Eddie Kingston chopped Elizabeth. Keeps going for it. Look at that guy getting out of the way in the tux. <laughs> oh, wow, he's going to post ram him. Elizabeth's getting in the way. Get out of the way. Oh, oh, she screwed that up. Hogan outsmarted himself. Yeah, Mike. Two more from you. Yeah, maybe China gets in by herself finally. Maybe not this year, but it could maybe now happen in the very near future. Wouldn't be surprised. 
I feel like a lot of the why the fuck haven't they gotten in names are going to get in in the next few years. So I'm not going to be too worried about it. Jesus, he's just... The way he's just backing her up is like so fucked up. That's Elizabeth. Finally, Earl. And he got her out of there. Yeah, that was the right call there. Yeah, I don't know where the uh, they lost the ring skirt there. It was before the Savage uh, body slam, so I don't know what happened out there. Uh-oh. Oh, and Hogan. Oh, uh, oh, that that classic '80s throat thing. They made me scared of throat stuff in the '80s. After Savage did a number with at, to Steamboat with the bell on his throat. Love that Savage move. Hogan's in prime position there. Oh, look at that. Hogan's right in position. Oof. It's only time. Pukamania is running out. Oh, I would love it if Savage retained. Big body slam to Hogan. Hogan rolling out. Savage has got tape off his arm. (laughs) Earlier, Jesse had a huge problem with Hogan grabbing the trunks of Savage. Now he's like, oh yeah, it's a piece of tape from his arm. That's totally cool. All's fair. Savage ditches it. (laughs) That almost looks like Dave Hebner, actually. To be honest. That might be Dave, not Earl. I think it is Dave. I'm, go- I'm going Dave on this one. Yeah, that's Dave. Maybe it's not. Yeah, choked him for real. Hogan's in prime position there, too. Just laying there like a dead whale. Savage is up. Nailed him. That was picture perfect. And, of course, Hogan kicks out like an asshole. <laughs> I do remember as a kid, my parents, especially my dad, getting a really big kick out of Hogan doing his thing like this. Hmm. Oop. One. Look at those punches are great. Savage with a great sell on the boot. And the leg drop. Made quick work of him at the end. And Hogan wins his belt back after not having it for a year. I was happy. I was happy at WrestleMania 5. I loved Randy Savage, though. But it was kind of cool. He was only a two-time champion. This is only the second time he won it. Because that first run of Hogan's was so long. (laughs) 
<laughs> He's putting the belt on right away. And again, too, when I was watching, this is the first time I'd ever seen anybody put the belt on. I'm like, why is Hogan doing it backwards? But I didn't realize that's the way you had to do it. And he put it right on right away. Hulk with the winged eagle. <laughs> Get out of here. He did. I remember thinking, like, being happy, like Hogan is champ again. He'd hold the title for a year before dropping it to Warrior. So him and Savage both had back-to-back year-long runs there. And this year, he would have to feud with Zeus and finish his feud with Macho Man. That would be his whole 1989, basically. Jesse hates it. Now he's WWE champion again. Just in time for the movie coming out. And he only got a chance to really hold that winged eagle title for the one day, the night that he lost it. It was the only day he really wore that belt. And he's giving us just what we want, y'all. So great. Yeah, Savage did a great job in this match. He really did. I thought this match epitomized what a fan like me would expect a WrestleMania main event to be. Two humongous names. And they put on a good match. You know, Hogan, to his credit, there's a couple of matches there, like the one with Savage here and the one with Warrior that were... The one with Warrior was more surprising. But were good and solid. Even the match with Slaughter at 7 was good. He had some okay ones. I went to school the next day pretty happy. Probably missed the bus, but I was happy. Yeah. Hmm. And he poses for the fans. Hogan must pose. Oh, man. Well... That is, yeah, we all stay just like we're staying now. There's another minute and a half of this posing shit left in the show, but I think we can probably kill it because there's nothing else to really watch there. But right on, that was uh, another one in the books. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you being here for yet another watch along. Uh, my plan as of right now is to be here tomorrow night for Raw, a Raw review, unless the show is just really uneventful. Maybe I'll skip it because I am working on a lot of Mania Month videos right now, so I could put that time to use, but we'll see. I'm going to plan as of now to be here tomorrow night, so we will be here tomorrow. If not, I'll make some sort of an announcement, but expect me after Raw. Hopefully you guys can join me, and I want to thank you for being with us again this afternoon. We, Ray, like you said, we will definitely do 23 or 24 next week. I'm going to lean towards 24 because we cannot do two WrestleManias in a row featuring that one specific person, if you know what I mean. So I think we'll do maybe 24 next week and watch Ric Flair's retirement. That might be that might be nice. So you guys have a good rest of your night. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I will catch you guys tomorrow night for the Raw Review. Peace.